Okay, here it is, the world's most bullish podcast back once again after record views. This is pod number 75 brought to you by Mr. All In, a.k.a. the Trillion Dollar Man, Dr. Evil 10%, a.k.a. the People's Champ, myself, Sir Neverlook, a.k.a. the Excellence of Execution. And she is here, but she's never here. You know who I mean for regular listeners and viewers. That's Mrs. No Show. Oh, still firing and this time we are firing on all cylinders thank you for regular viewers and listeners keep on tuning in but also thank you to new uh, listeners and viewers as well we're probably going to get cancelled soon because of the jokes that we tell on here so um enjoy it while you can yeah like we said once once we started getting a viewership it's going to be over so yeah we're getting deep <laughs> close to an actual viewership now so I was going to say it's it's everyone's fault so everyone's a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> so if anything, like please stop watching. Stop. Yeah. Watching because the more don't share, or, or if you do want to watch it, keep it to yourself. Yeah. T- don't tell, tell no anyone. One. Tell no one. And yeah. then dislike yeah. the video when I actually leave. Just don't do anything. Just, we need to keep this a secret because yeah, once the woke brigade find us, but we're we're done. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> You know, keep it away from your friends that you think are interested in Bitcoin or anything FTX related. Just, just, just well, stop. Keep, keep it away definitely from anyone who um, identifies as a socialist, or if they've got pronouns in the name. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, if they're like at least ten percent Nazi, then that's okay. Recommend us, but any less than or, that, no. or if they seem to think that CBDCs are a good idea or UBIs mm. are a good idea. It's not a show for you. Fuck off. No, you just report. <laughs> but anyway, um, start off with, um, I suppose, a good story. Everyone's favourite yeah. president. So El-, El Salvador have said they are going to DCA one whole Bitcoin per day. So Bukele has obviously seen this as a big opportunity to build up some reserves and wealth within El Salvador. What do we all think about this? He's a smart guy. Yeah, this is the way. And and I love it as well, because obviously when Bukulele came in, you're never sure, is it maybe, is he going to pivot to shit coining? Does he really understand Bitcoin? When the price goes down, is he going to get shaken out? Can he take the abuse? Holy shit, he can take the abuse. Not only oh, can he can give it. Abuse, he's just giving them two fingers. Everyone's like, oh, you must be selling your Bitcoin. You've been reckless. You've gambled your country's money and you got wrecked. He's like, Fuck that and buy more. Good man. My my one comment in my notes is bullish. <laughs> it it's good yeah. that he's got conviction around it, and it does just show that he it's kind of it wasn't just uh you know flash in the pan for him. It was conviction around his thinkings, what he believes, and he's going further in. But you got to look on the flip side. What's the real disadvantage from El Salvador? They're pinned to the US dollar. They're fucked. You know, so him doing this, it's a potential way out. And if you actually look at the statistics, I think from what they've lost in their treasury on the, in the last couple of years, in the value of Bitcoin going down, they've made more than in um, in tourism. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's always the slight uh, thing that goes makes me still slightly question it because I think he's got he's still got an incentive to be positive Bitcoin because there's a load of Bitcoiners that have gone that will now be contributing to, to the society and he's going, I want to keep the Bitcoiners coming. Uh, but I think the fact he's doing it as public as he is, he's still buying. You know, he seems to be... He, he's making too many enemies on a global stage with other politicians in other countries for this just to be a bit of a marketing campaign to get more tourism into El Salvador. He's, he's gone too far. He, he believes... See, I'm just saying that I've, I'm just, I've always been waiting for freedom to be needed in El Salvador. Some democracy bombs. <laughs> yeah. Um, which hasn't happened, which has surprised me. But I suppose it's if Bitcoin hits a certain level, I think we'd see that. Yeah. I, I think it's one of them where they've already tried to hit them normally with the, the they, they need an excuse to drop bombs on you. But there could be a random SAS um disguised as a 
kind of guerrilla attack on the president. We've seen those before. Yeah, they've done assassinations plenty of times, you know. <laughs> and the thing is, some people may think, oh, this is a conspiracy theory. It's actually left, right and centre. Oh, but that was the CIA in the 70s. <laughs> what do you think? Why do you think anything else is different now? I know. Well, we, we saw it during lockdown, didn't we? We saw it was like four, four world leaders didn't agree with lockdown, didn't agree with vaccine mandates, and they all got assassinated. But it, none of it were by official sources from the West. They were all just random militia that wanted to attack their their world leaders. It's just the, the odd video of <laughs> these gorillas just running in off the street look very fucking organized all dressed in black in very strict formation went in two shots and then they run out again you're like <laughs> seem to be pretty well trained for random guys with guns but okay but we'll go with your story but um but yeah it's a good story before we get yeah, on to the good good one to start off off the pod with uh, before yeah. we kind of go i think expose into our main stories so yeah. it is a bit of a part. It is a bit of a three part of a trilogy. It's like yeah. this is um, what was it in Star Wars? You had um, a New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and then Return of a Jedi. I hate Star Wars. So this is Return of a Soy Boy. <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to say that the first story we've got here is the bankruptcy documents are coming out, and uh, they're just pure fire. Uh, so this is the 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 guy that closed down Enron. So John J. Ray the Third. What a name, John J. Ray the Third. And uh, so he's come in now. He's the acting CEO of FTX, uh, and he oversaw Enron's bankruptcy. Heavy hitter guy knows how to come in and unwind a fraud, and he's basically put out his first document saying the status of FTX. And uh, the highlight is. It's the worst case he has ever seen. The financial fraud, lack of oversight, and just general management of a company of this size is the worst he's ever seen. And he saw Enron, which was the yeah. previous well, unprecedented worst financial state of a company. I was going to say Enron was taking advantage of new kind of like financial instruments, wasn't it? And, well, created fraud from... So what's the official... Explanation: Enron's downfall was attributed to its reckless use of derivatives and special pur- purpose entities by hedging its risk with special purpose entities, which it owned. Enron retained a risk associated with the transactions. So, yeah, it's pretty much um, FTX have used these new instruments in order to um, create mass fraud and put too much risk against FTX, which, well, imploded. Um, I so... I love- I love the one where oh he's got some stories in here and he? he's got these links and chats and stuff where that Sam we've got a few stories where Sam's just doing DMs and text messages with people I just think every time he starts communicating it's hilarious because he, he goes it's single Sam is owning up here he's gone I fucked up big multiple times but you know what my biggest fuck up was and um, whoever he's talking to is he says what and he goes. The one thing everyone told me to do, everything would be 70% fixed right now if I hadn't. So I'm trying to guess. I have no idea. It was chapter 11, which means bankruptcy. He thinks the worst thing he did, his biggest fuck up, was bankruptcy. Sam is still sitting there in denial, thinking if he still ran FTX, he'd be okay. He would have traded his way out of this somehow. But maybe it's just a PR piece because, you know, it's to keep it all going because he's... He's still getting invited to conferences. He's still headlining something with a load of big shots in there. Oh, and that was previous. That's been cancelled. He's not on. Oh, has it? Because something today, I saw a Twitter post. I was like, my God. Mm -hmm. Um, But kind of going into this, into this thread. So it was going through the bankruptcy documents. And it said September the 30th, they had 1.36 billion in assets. So they should have had about 15 billion at that point. But the um, former head of Enron, has put massive doubt on that because he's like, well, um, because it was put off by um, SBF. He's just like, I just can't take that in face value because everything's so incorrect in what he's put together. And that there was 500 million in cash. But what we've kind of learned over the last couple of weeks, which attributed to this bankruptcy is it's somewhere between one and five billion 
were loaned to Sam Bankman Freed from FTX. So minimum 1 billion. So that puts it up to 2.3. 500 million went to a CTO. So, you know, we're starting to approach at least 3 billion, which can be attributed to. And then also they bought random properties. It's almost like they were siphoning the money out into other purposes. So like these properties, you know, are they still owned? Or have they been sold in the meantime? And where did that money go from that property purchase or sale? Yeah, I saw that his parents had bought $300 million worth of property in Barbados over the last two years. Oh, you mean the uh, regulators, the Demo staunch Democrat um, supporters? Yeah, just, I think, what is it, a politician and a lawyer? You're like, wow, where'd they get 300 mil from? Is it their son? Maybe they um, followed um, Nancy Pelosi's trades. Yeah. But um, the, the another thing that I loved out of this was obviously for a company this big and to raise all the funding that they've done, all the investment, you know, they, they raised a billion dollars worth of investment, I think at a $32 billion valuation. To do that, you need to have an audited set of accounts to do it. So this exposes that the company that audited it, their location, their address is the metaverse. You, you can't find the auditors. <laughs> just, it's just the entire thing is a is just a complete joke. What do they say? There's no HR um, department, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but then they had no agreements, no <laughs> status of employment. The bored. expenses were approved through emojis. The, um, oh, actually, this is probably my one favorite thing. Assets were stored through private keys, which were circulated around on emails. <laughs> yeah. and i think they were spending 100k a day on food no wonder no. he's so fat for a vegan well um again don't forget i was speaking to some of these people at the uh, company as well in direct contact and i remember one of the conversations that I had with this person was yeah things move at a thousand miles per hour here so you've got to be quick so things weren't getting documented properly whatsoever. That's the thing. That that could sound like, oh, yeah, we're just really good at executing. Or really, it's just fucking chaos and things change day to day. Sam will just be like, yeah, we spent a billion over here, 200 million over there. And suddenly you've just got to jump to it and do it. And it's just chaos because he's just spending, not, he's not spending real money, is he? He's spending his random FTT token or investor funds. Yeah, exactly. And it's not really the type of language that I hear from compliance officers after having <laughs> worked in the industry for over a decade you know if anything things yeah it's just complete opposite so when you hear that it, again in hindsight makes you think hmm things weren't going so well also to plan and uh yeah i just had to pop out there but i need to give another shout out to john j ray the third what a name you know if i had time again i'd be coming back as john j ray the fourth <laughs> <laughs> hey you know just come in can you imagine you must have some theme music he just walks into the building like a wwe character just behind <laughs> him you know like i'm gonna sort this shit out i've already done enron this one it'll be nothing but and what i think to find it's even bigger than enron <laughs> what a but i do wonder like these companies like they go in to siphon all the money out. So literally they're, you know, scraping the meat from the bone. They are there to get every last ounce before they just fuck it off, sell off bits or whatever else. Is there anything left? Because they um, were, were transferring assets whilst all this was being rumoured. And everyone's going, fucking hell, look at all this going in and out. And then... Hey, they got hacked. Give them a break. No, no, no. This was before. And then literally a few hours later, they got hacked. Like, I think a billion or so. It was, was a constant. serious hack. <laughs> yeah, but it's before they had about a billion, which went out the door, and everyone's going, this, this, um, you know, like, the stuff going on is really dodgy. And then that evening, in UK time, I was watching going, oh, they're claiming a hack now. And that was just for the last 600 million. But it was like that billion before was getting moved yeah. out. So they've moved out all these assets. So what's left remaining like, are they just going to find, like, his store of amphetamines and sell them on the market or something? 
Yeah, it's we, we've got we've got a story later on, but we can do it now if you want, because it's the um well we know how much John J. Ray the third is getting paid. It's thirteen hundred dollars an hour. And um other execs that have come in to support him are getting nine seven five per hour. And um, it's weird how this whole is all written because it says mm. the fees pay on compact in comparison. Just because it's billions, but like let's be honest, there's not billions left. So no. if you end up paying the CEO tens of millions and some of it was ex tens of millions, who knows what we're really what's on the boat, how much meat is there, and they're customer funds. Remember, so these th- that thirteen hundred dollars per hour. So it's going to get random- paid out at least ten grand per day based upon an eight hour. But realistically, he's going to claim about 14, 15. So that money is just going to be gone in no time. Yeah, what's you'll remaining? Be on bonuses and all sorts. So this is what yeah, this is what I course. said. This is why it's really sad whenever you, whenever like people look at the are oh, you guaranteed a certain amount of money up to this and da, da 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 da. It's like, well, only if they can really find it and it can take decades. And then is it insured or is it not? Obviously in Barbados it isn't. And then once the once the, the liquidators come in, this has happened time and time again. It happened in Mount Gox. It's happened so many other times. The liquidators are absolute rats because you think, oh, it's fine. Like, how much money can he get? He's only getting say two hundred grand a year. That's going to be or two hundred grand a month. So that's a couple of million a year. This could take ten years to sort out. So just yeah. like one guy it's could not take your average case. Well, well but put yeah. this. So he's on thirteen hundred an hour. He's going to claim for about fifteen hours a day. He's going to claim for six, seven days a week. It's yeah. going to be over, it's about 130 grand a week plus expenses. So his expenses are going to be around about 10 grand, so 140. Put that over a year, um, which is going to put it up to 7 million. And then all the people who are working with him, exactly the same, if our $975 an hour, they're not going to be far short of that. So you're going to be paying a pack of, 20 people probably about 20 30 million a year and if that takes plus bonuses years. yeah it's it's kind of nuts and then obviously they are getting paid directly out of customer funds and and it's probably it must... only got it's oh. probably only got 50 to 100 million left there so that's going to be eaten up so yeah. nothing's going back to the customers yeah and this is before all the creditors because yeah. sam said oh we're going to pay customers back first Sam, you ain't the CEO anymore. You didn't get to speak. And um, what's really going to happen is there's going to be, because I've heard there's there's one account on there, one hedge fund, but the largest on there had $250 million worth in their account. That was one of the largest accounts that FTX was looking after. Was that not siphoned? Um, well, who knows? Yeah, it's all probably. Yeah, well, it's yet. also you've got, but... you got the spreadsheet value versus what the assets are underneath and we know that the assets were at least a tenth so take it from 200 to 20 million and that 20 million is probably already gone yeah just my, my point is just that that's a company that is owed 250 million i can guarantee mm. they will have a team of lawyers demanding to be front of the queue so they're going to scrape some money out first so the guy that's got 10 20 grand or two grand you're back of the queue you're getting paid last so if there is a random 250 million that they managed to find Probably who's going to get paid is the hedge fund that's got the heavy hitting lawyer in Barbados probably sat there now going, we want our funds fucking now. Because that's what I would do if I had my hedge fund in there. I'm probably a rich guy. I'm going to spend five million on making their life hell to try and get my yeah. 250 out first. I want to be front of the queue. And that, and there have been multiple companies like that, probably 10 or 20 that probably all have a stake, have um, some kind of big calling on billion or so who knows two billion they're getting their money first because they're gonna have lawyers sat there the average pleb you're not gonna have a, you're not gonna even even if you do hire a lawyer it's gonna be a two-bit lawyer that sends a letter once a week you give <laughs> it it's so easy to ignore like how much money does he want 20 grand yeah fuck him off no one cares about your 20 grand this guy's coming for two but, bits. yeah you gotta form an orderly queue or jump the queue yeah and of course you know who knows what's going on if <laughs> If I was, if I'd lost that much money, I would actually be trying to find Sam, and I'd be throwing him a shit ton of money to go, go send me that Bitcoin from behind the scenes. I know you got access to the keys. Here's five mil. Send me my hundred. Stop being a dick. Yeah, and, you know, you, you know, you, you might do it. But um, 
we are talking about Sam. This, this is a great interview he did with Vox. It's so bizarre how Sam is responding to random DMs from people. Uh, he's obviously hugely in investigation. If he's got any lawyers, they'll be like, shut the fuck up, Sam. Just stop. This talking. is what I don't get. Like, yeah, he's still out there, but not out there. The media is still painting him as, you know, a good guy and not the crook or the villain that he is. And uh, and yeah, we, we just need to we need to get to the bottom of this. He's not even in handcuffs yet. Well, there's a video of him waddling around the Bahamas today with his backpack on, going to get himself a soy latte. (laughs) Is it being verified? Is it recent? Yeah. Well, it looked like his fat ass, and it was a backpack which was which was matched, um, which is so it's fairly certain. Yeah, but but this conversation, right? It's just great. I just got to read it, right? So the the interviewer goes, "You said a lot of stuff about you wanted to make regulations, just good ones. Was that pretty much just PR?" He goes, there's, n- there's no one really out there making sure good things happen and bad things don't. Usually there's only one to- toggle. Do more or do less. Yeah, it's just PR. Fuck regulators. They make everything worse. They don't pre- protect consumers at all. It does seem like any kind of com- consumer protection would be good, though. Like maybe regulators can't deliver it, but sure does look like consumers lose their shirts a bunch. He goes, agreed on both. It would be good, but regulators can't do it. And you're like... This is from Mr. Regulation himself. I watched this little dick, com, com, um, what's it called, testify in Congress saying he needs crypto and Bitcoin needs more regulation. And now this, and I, I kind of thought at the time he actually believed it. I thought he actually wanted to be Mr. Crypto, Mr. Regulation. I'm going to clean it up. But really behind the scenes, he didn't believe a fucking word of it. He knows it's a load of garbage. He knows regulation doesn't work. This is something to pander to the public. And all it really does is put a moat around things and makes stuff harder. It doesn't stop people doing bad things. So yeah. another another quote about this is, I, I love this interview. It's so informal and he's basically, he's bitter his handlers now. So by this dumb game, we woke Westerners play where we say all the right shibber loose. And so everyone likes us. It's like, my God. And then he talks about how o- OFAC is undermining US interests globally, basically being on a business front. So he's bitten his handlers, but they're still not slating him in the media. That's the strangest thing about this. Fuck regulators, they make everything worse. What else have we got here? ESG has been perverted beyond recognition. You know, this is one which we talk about. It's billionaires telling you that you shouldn't eat beef whilst flying around in a private jet, holidaying on a private yacht and maintaining several residences. So they're making a carbon yeah. footprint which within probably a year, which 100,000 people together will never make. But they're telling yeah. you you can't eat beef and we listen to them. And it's, it's a point. But all this will kind of go under the radar, everyone, whilst they're self-flagellating because they want to appear good to everyone and virtuous well i was just watching the football beforehand and before we started recording and the world cup will be the biggest carbon emission before the world before a world war you know like the the single event so there's never been a bigger event that has provided as much carbon emission as this yeah, but yeah, it's going un- unknown, isn't it? Yeah, no one, all, no one wants to hear that. No one wants to report. No, so, exactly. I, I think I think you sound like a Nazi. Stop oh, eating. I'm just your, trying to get us cancelled. Start <laughs> eating your soy. Stop eating beef, and eat your lentils. Yeah, I'm just trying to get us cancelled. I don't like the show anyway. <laughs> <laughs> There's another great example of virtue signaling at the World Cup because obviously we know all about the. Um, Qatar not liking gay rights and stuff. So England were going to wear their orange armbands, weren't they? And then Qatar yeah. said, you can wear them, but if you do, we're going to book every player that does. So England very quickly went, oh, sorry, sorry, we, we will not wear those. And then no one noticed that Iran was standing next to England and they did not sing their national anthem. And that's because they are protesting their government back home um, for various laws, money printing, and how they treat women yeah. in back in Iran. Now, those guys 
are standing up against their government, when they go back, they'll probably be arrested, maybe even killed. They, they very serious consequences. They did it. Our little fucking idiots, they're being told by our government to do a thing. The smallest kind of punishment you can possibly get, a yellow card comes your way. Straight away, we're like, oh, fuck the gays. Hang on then. Wait, well, I'm not getting a yellow card for one of them. That's the whole point. It's And it's literally, you, you know when someone's virtue signaling, when you challenge their point and offer punishment if they do the thing. Because standing up against societal norms does hit resistance, right? And so you, when you hit resistance, what do you do when resistance hits? If you completely cave, you're virtue signaling. If you go, fuck it, I'm going to push through this resistance and take whatever punishment comes, that means that's a true belief that you're willing to stand up for and fuck the consequences. England and Iran are perfect examples. England, virtue signaling wankers, don't give a shit about the things that they pretend. It's all woke virtue signaling. Iran, they care about the issues they they, they do because they are risking prison, if not death. That means you care. It's just like the hypocrisy of it all is just hilarious because... I still reckon if you ask the average person in Britain right now, what do you think of Iran? They'll they'll probably have a negative opinion. And then, but look at those guys. Those guys came out to a world tournament and stood up against their government. Yeah. I was got be, a huge respect for them. I mean, anyone yeah. who doesn't know the history of Iran, I think it's until the 1960s or 70s, it was a very almost westernized country. It was very modern. They weren't wearing um, what they called the headscarves. Um, and then, um, uh, well, I don't know what you class the government as extremist of some sort that came in and basically enforced all these laws. So this isn't their natural, you know, their natural heritage. This is something which has been forced on them relatively recently. And they start kicking back because they just don't want to put up with it anymore. Well, this is also interesting because I would class, and um, again, I'm trying to get us cancelled, I would class Iran and Saudi Arabia in the same vein, right? But um, in terms of uh, gay rights and then obviously uh, women as well and discrimination about women, um, their rights, uh, family, marriage, divorce, etc. But football has brought about a public holiday for them following from Argentina, uh, following from the win today. Now, can they turn things around through football if they were to uh, to stand up? We'll see. Because they're, it seems to have made a difference. They're tyrannical for a reason. Like they're generally yeah. a poor nation and the rich rely upon the oil and they're not going to share the oil spoils. Mm. So, but if they were to happen. stand up against their government with you know, continued decent performances because that was an amazing performance against Argentina today. Do you think they may get a change? No. The footballers will um, receive luxury homes if they get out of the, qual- out of the group and everyone just go back to being poor. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, yeah. Well, it, it depends. Like, who knows? Because at the moment, Saudi Arabia, the team, haven't done anything, have they? They haven't stood up against their government. They've, they've had a good No, job. they haven't. But um, and that's why it's rare. That's why I just wanted to point out that Iran yeah. like, have so much respect for those guys that did it because every single one of them knows that they're going to be in big trouble when they go home. They might not be able to go home. And um, that's the type of do not comply that we want to see. You know, it's <laughs> not wearing a mask, not get, getting the stupid poison shots that they try and give you. Like When these governments bring out stupid rules and start, if, if we all don't comply, they don't have enough enforcers to make us. So yeah, mm. this, this is a good example of not complying, and I just thought it'd be good. But um, to go back, let's to get the... back on. Yeah, let's get yeah, back so, on topic. So go back of, to um... this one. Like in the conversation, it said Bankman Fried has maintained that FTX has never invested the deposits of crypto account holders on the exchange. It's a technicality, though, isn't it? Because mm. FTX have never, mm. Almeida have, yeah. and they lent Almeida ten billion. It so it's whilst he. Yeah, he thinks he's being clever. So the reporter pressed him on the point via Twitter. And whilst he continued to insist that FTX did not directly use account money in this way, he said that Almeida did, which he also owns. Mm. 
Yeah. So, like, yeah. do you give customer funds away at all to anyone and give them control of it? Like, who cares what they did with it? Did you relinquish control of customer funds? Because that's illegal. And you'd have had to say mm. yes to that. Don't, don't ask what you did with them because straight away you can be like, oh, technically they did something slightly <laughs> different. We did a derivative of a... Da, da, da. It's like, fuck off, Sam. Did you lose control and give other people control of customer funds to do something with? You'd have been like, well... Yeah. But you can just already hear his little squirmy voice coming out with some slick markery an- answer, can't you? Yeah. In court. Yeah, always, I, was, yeah, I would go back to that quote from the guy that was um, shilling BitConnect. So technically, you didn't lose your money. Okay, you kind of lost your money. <laughs> it's just, the, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the first statement was false. He, he lent the money and he lost it. And uh, and yeah, so the next story is we're seeing the next dom- domino. I think this is going to continue, isn't it? Right throughout just about all exchanges, who knows? So we've got Genesis here uh, who had 2.8 billion as a lending unit. So these guys were a big kind of advocate for give us your crypto and we will give you yield on it to the tune of 2.8 billion. They've halted withdrawals. And then I don't know. No, nothing you... says that our businesses sound like halting withdrawals. Exactly. <laughs> and, and this story. That surely should be illegal. You know, oh, well, to hold well, well it, it works in everything, doesn't it? Your, your standard stocks and shares account. We saw it last year with um, GameStop and Robin uh, Robinhood. So, yeah. And, and you'll see it with banks, you know, hence the reason why we see bank runs. Which right then, like they say the halt and withdrawals. In reality, it means we have no money left. <laughs> it's, yeah. one of the, where it's like we're, we're nearly at zero. So if anyone else withdraws, we're not halting withdrawals. It's just there's no fucking money left. And uh, and then this this story is actually about four or five days old because the update on this now is they've admitted they are insolvent and they need a billion dollars in the next week or they file for bankruptcy. So Genesis. Shit. Uh, it's shaking up the shit, isn't it? Because what kind of psychopath would give them a billion dollars right now? Come Sam Bankman freed. Yeah, yeah, just as another vehicle to uh, to launder money through. Yeah, to yeah he's, he's going to um, make the greatest comeback and say, oh, I couldn't get FTX back because of blah, blah, blah. Other people, it would have been fine if he was still CEO, so now he's going to do it with Genesis. That's my prediction, yeah. when he doesn't go down and he gets let off with a slap on the wrist and his suspension from being a CEO ends after six months, bang, he's back. That would be hilarious. With, with a billion well, pounds of self and self-funded billion, which or two billion or whatever, which I don't know where it came from. Because yeah. bizarrely, Genesis probably would have been bailed out by Sam if FTX hadn't gone under yet. And he'd have done yeah. the same thing. He'd have gone, here's a loan, but in my shit coin, all you've got to do, what customer funds have you got left? You have to deposit them on the FTX. And that just yeah. keeps his Ponzi going for a bit longer. He's just, they probably still got a couple of hundred million left. He's like, great. I can go gamble this and try and run it up to 10 bill because I'm fucking short, aren't I? And then he <laughs> lost that as well. So he just lost more. Just like, because that's exactly what he did to BlockFi. They thought they were his savior. And all they did is the, the few bit of funds they had left, they gave it to Sam. And Sam set it on fire. One thing I've been thinking about as well is the, the amount of, I guess, knowledge and brains in the industry is going to be crazy right now because people were cutting costs anyway and they were you know 10 percent here in terms of the workforce 20 percent here but now people from block five genesis perhaps grayscale even um you know crypto.com gemini these people are all losing their jobs but none of them want to go back to traditional finance jobs they want to stay in the crypto ecosystem. But where are they going to go to? That's going to be impossible, isn't it? They're going to have to. Absolutely. Have to go back. There's, there's no... Yeah. Who, who the hell is hiring in crypto? Yeah. No, no, no one's even hiring in tech right now. Everyone's <laughs> downsizing. So it yeah. almost doesn't matter what industry you're in. Every industry is downsizing. This is not a job market right now. This is a no. keep your job market and ride out the storm. 
mm. you've been one of the unfortunate people to be let go, you're definitely taking a pay cut, probably. You're going to have to take a few steps down the run and eat your pride and go and just try and get into an old, you know, old financial institution and be on half the money. Cause... But will this potentially increase and enhance old traditional companies because the brains typically are better because those brains have migrated over to the crypto industry for now they'll go back and then once again when things do take off they'll be gone again right but it could be an in interesting insight to improving but do you think they're not that bright these people are they i was gonna say do you think um crypto in its current form is ever going to come back or do you think it's going to be simplified exchanges with no I think leverage? it'll be big. I think it'll be bigger and better, to be honest. Like so, because we've seen it before. You know, Mount Gox, Quadriga, this FTX. Like it will be bigger. Um, it'll just be. It, it, I'm not saying that the same dumb mistake won't happen again. By the way, but it will definitely get better. Yeah, I, I think I've always been like. I just kind of reluctant kind of admitting of the old financial system will be built on Bitcoin. So there will be a places to learn yields. There'll be places to, to get a mortgage and all that kind of stuff. And you'll have to give other companies custody of your Bitcoin in exchange for mortgages, loans, or what type of stuff. I think that stuff will, will happen. But I think what won't happen is crazy percentages that we got before and all these companies that were given 10, 20, 30% uh, worth of gains on shit coins, that's just done. Like, if that ever comes back, it will raise so many alarm bells that no one will put their money on a platform that does that because they know what's happening eventually. It's going to go pop. So that's you're thinking it'll be bigger and it'll be bigger and better, but it'll be replacing the um, financial system really is the next kind of like on step yeah. yeah so i was thinking i think probably quite one dimensional and but i think that crypto will come back but the industry will literally just be exchanges going forward uh, no crypto will definitely come back like i said uh, every four years there's another version of the scam so it always changes yeah. like i suppose it. i just can't see what's coming yeah like, like, no one saw jpegs man no one saw jpegs in the blockchain you told what me what you mean years what you mean I, I can still see them they look great yeah, it's... some stick dicks, some um, what were those um, those zoo animals called where they mixed two together? Yeah, and if you go back a year and go NFTs and JPEGs are fucking stupid, the majority of people look at you and go, "Man, you're dumb, dude. You don't get it. You you don't get the the power of NFTs. They're gonna be everywhere." I'm just like, "Am I that dumb? Like, am I not getting this thing? Like, what are you talking about?" They're literally um. I think we talked about it. Maybe I think it was just me and them. So never look. I think there's one use which we came up with, and that was pretty much as a receipt or a certificate. So it doesn't really yeah. have any value. It's literally you buy the actual thing and you have an NFT, which is that you own it. So pretty much it's saying, here's your receipt. It's got this you know, unique, unique identifier. And so you buy a flash car, you get an NFT, but it's pretty much the values in the car, not the NFT. Yeah, so right. it's still pretty much redundant. And we we were reaching, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we were reaching with it because we didn't want to be flippant to say that there is no use case at all. But if that's the use case, then, you know, we, we're still good. We, yeah, we can survive still, without it. They're still useless. They're still worth, I don't yeah. know, 50 pence. And... There, there, are, there is no use case. There literally is no use case because it's just... All it is is it's a leg, it's an all it really is it's an entry on the blockchain. So if you want to buy that sports car and ha have a, a mutable link, then your link is that Bitcoin transaction that you just spent. And if you want to link that transaction to a fucking JPEG, then go fucking do it. Like good, what, what, who gives a shit? That's all it is. It's a it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a transaction on a blockchain. I love how we're being generous, but you're just shooting it down because you hate JPEGs that much. Well, it doesn't make sense. That's why. Like the fact that a transaction's on the blockchain and the Bitcoin one is transmitting actual value, whereas this NFT one transports a link that goes to a JPEG. Somehow, like to think that that has value 
It just oh, we didn't say it had value. We said that oh, no it's, a, it's its use case. Well, and it's, it's the only use, yeah. it's it's the only use, only use case. A use case would mean it's adding value. It doesn't add value. It's just another... I, I reckon... If anything, about... the only use case I can see, actually, is flexing on social media. That is actually a use case. I thought that but, would actually be a thing. But that's so receipts. Easy. That's a receipt slash t- certificate. So that's your yeah. 20 to 50p value there. Yeah, because yeah, it's one of them where if you're like some billionaire or millionaire and you want to go flex your Twitter audience and go, I've got a half million pound JPEG, you go, well, how can you prove that? Well, I'm going to shove it as my profile picture. And, you know, because Twitter did it where you can only link to something that is on your account and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, okay, so social media flexing of wealth it's it's a more verifiable thing other than me taking a picture next to some rented Lambos, shoving up a half million pound JPEG for my profile picture. That just means I have so much money, I'm, I can waste it on a profile picture. But, but yeah, but it's, it's just a digital dumb. receipt. Yeah. Oh, it's so dumb. But weirdly, so something dumb. just as dumb, even dumber, is coming next. And, and yes, that's the thing. No one knows what it is yet because if you did, then you could be very, very rich by getting ahead of it. But some idiot is thinking about it right now, and they're probably about to launch it in about a year year or two's time, and all the kids and all the dumb money is going to buy the shit out of it. So maybe, um, so, you know, let, let's ask the viewers and the listeners, send your ideas in. What do you think the dumbest shit is going to be which comes about? Or equally, try and convince us that NFTs have some utility. Because I'm, oh. I'm still open to to actually being I don't heard. Think, so leave... I think anyone who's got this far isn't going to think that NFTs have some real value. <laughs> I mean, we're not oh. we we're not even allowed to say that they have value. Well, that they have a use case as a receipt. <laughs> leave, <laughs> leave your thoughts and and uh, comments in the comments section. One thing I did think about just while I was gone then is um, holding your Bitcoin and holding it forever, right? Eventually, I was thinking, well, I could loan against my Bitcoin to, I don't know, purchase property. But after seeing everything that's happened and then knowing now that, well, I don't ever want to leverage against my Bitcoin, is that going to be the case in years to come because the volatility of the market will have died down? Or, you know, what am I going to do? in 20 years' time, when my Bitcoin is an astronomical price. You're going to get an Apache helicopter, some cowboy boots, and some JD, drive around, fly around, and swear at people, drunk as hell, who didn't believe you that Bitcoin was going to moon. Mm-hmm. That's what you're going to do in 20 years' time. I'm going to remember pod 75. <laughs> yeah. Now, guess what, right? This is the reason why you're even thinking like that, and why the majority of people think like this. Is because we live in a fiat world. We've never not known a fiat world where you have to make your money work for you. And why is that? Because we live in inflation. So you're trying to beat inflation. You don't want to just leave your money, sit there and rot and rot to zero because that's what's going to happen. If we're on a Bitcoin standard and we've moved to that, the most valuable thing you could ever do with that Bitcoin is just hold it because the price of stuff is going to stay the same. So if you want to loan out your Bitcoin and risk total loss, for a five to ten percent gain per year, then that's going to be your private decision. Oh, it's and... not to loan it out; it's to loan against it. So similar to like you use your house as collateral, yeah, in the event of something. I yeah. think it would just be normal businesses. You know, think about a normal economy without the layers of fiat shit on it. So hmm. you know, what would be a worthwhile business for you to work in or own? You know, whether it could be just something as simple as um, a clothes laundry, you know, or it could be a farm, you know, but you wouldn't be looking at, well, this stock will go astronomical or go 30, 40 percent because it's lent because basically all its income is based upon le- lending and leverage. So it's going to be those kind of like stories will have gone. The stock market will never be the same on a Bitcoin standard. But, you know, my kind of like thoughts is when or i suppose as some would say if would be get a fucking farm i don't give a shit i'm gonna have a massive farm i'm gonna farm for my family do what the fuck i want and have a good life and have grandchildren on that farm <laughs> yeah because yeah. things like for us like trying to expand and get more property and all that kind of stuff and make additional income 
it's just that it's not going to be needed. But but yeah, I think the, the entire old financial system, but without the recklessness, right? Because provided that it can always get out of control and the way it'll get out of control is creating paper Bitcoin. And so these companies that mm. will offer mortgages, they'll, they'll say put 10, 20% down worth of Bitcoin and we're going to give you, you know 10x more to, to get on the housing ladder and that kind of stuff. But straight away, right? So if we go back a hundred years, because straight away we're in the mindset of 5% down is a lot of money. That's a big deposit to do because of the price of housing. The price of housing is going to become much more sensible. Uh, we'll probably go back to where we were 100 years ago, where the average house price was three times your salary. And you could and you paid it off in your 20s. That's mm -hmm. what our grandparents did. So, so it's not that long ago. So we'll probably return back to a market like that, where all these hugely inflated prices, because we, ju we just don't realize how fucked our entire economy is based on fiat. Because there's so much fake money sloshing about. Most of it isn't real. All the it's like when the FTX goes bust and you suddenly realize their FTT coin that was supposedly worth 20 billion is now worth zero because of just a pure confidence game. There's you so kind of hope much that money in fear. Maybe but... maybe half those jobs disappear. You know, the made up ones, government where because there's no accountability in government, you're gonna end up with a drastically reduced government drastically reduce jobs and you'd look at efficiency if you are going to have a centralized government but you'd have a lot of pri private ent enterprise which would be appropriate you know in a true it, capitalist society it's a genuine question as well what were people thinking that their ftt coins were going to do for them like we talked about <laughs> it last week in terms of the cro coin with crypto.com like, and we all said, mm, not for us, seems scammy. And, you know, the fact that you had to hold it for a period of time. But what were people in their, you know, hundreds of thousands to make it hundreds of millions of dollars worth thinking that that FTT coin was going to achieve and bring to them? Parity with Bitcoin, <laughs> not looking at things such as what the value is. They're not looking at what the... Um, the amount of coins versus market cap is so you know literally it was like oh it's worth a pound they say it's going to be like bitcoin therefore i'm going to it's going to go up to at the time say forty thousand. so literally that's what's going was going for a shit coin's mind it's not looking at the principles of what sound money is it's not looking at the principles of what bitcoin brings in you know like we said like i just said a true um capitalist society is just going, this is going to make me super rich because I've got 10 of them. Therefore, I've got, I'm going to have 400 grand. I'm going to buy a house. Um, actually, I might buy a Lambo instead because that'll make me look, look good on Instagram. But instead, um, they bought more and 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 now they're fucking wrecked. Yeah. But the, the biggest scam that, that like, the, the way the exchanges made people buy the coin is that they gave you massively preferential rates and fees for trading. So if, so if you traded in FTT, then you would get virtually zero fees. Whereas if you mm. trade in Bitcoin or, or Fiat or other, other shit coins, they'll charge you much more. Binance does the same. Crypto.com does the same. So that's how they rope in their users. You get much reduced trading fees. So... And then they then they, they also give you much preferential staking fees as well. It was very much like a honey trap. Every exchange does it. They point all users towards their coin and they go, if you use this coin, it's the most efficient one. So whenever you're going in and out of a trade, come back to FTT. Don't go back to Bitcoin. Don't go back to pounds or dollars. Go into FTT, hold your, your collateral in FTT. And then as you go into each trade, into Ethereum or Dink, Doink, whatever, come out and hold it in FTT. And if you do that, fees can be as low as zero. Whereas if you come out and go into ETH or go into Bitcoin, we'll charge you one and a half percent. Yeah. That's that's usually the the kicker. And, and it's why to a certain extent, it's why that if you get in on one of these coins and then an exchange does very well, then the, the value of that coin goes up because they're forcing everyone to use it. So wherever we use it gets onboarded, that coin goes up in value because they have to pretty much hold them their money in the exchange token. Mm. They virtually force you to, uh, unless you're just willing to pay fees. And the average person who's going in and out of shit coins is like, well, if I'm going to trust this exchange, why wouldn't I trust their coin?
Yeah, of course. Yeah. Bitcoin would never do that, but we're talking about shit coiners here. So. <laughs> uh, um, talking about exchanges. Yeah, I was just going to say, nice segue back into an exchange with uh, Genesis, right? Yeah. Well, this is where um, it just follows on from the previous story where Genesis essentially has gone bust now. They need a billion dollars. Yeah. So it links to Gemini. And yes. so Ge- Gemini, one of the ones that I mentioned last week, super regulated, super safe. Turns out, I ain't as safe as I thought because they have an earned program on Gemini. Uh, so it's not their main exchange. Who knows if their main exchange is affected? They say it isn't in their tweet thread, but they have a place where you can essentially stake your Bitcoin and your shitcoin and you earn a percent back. Now it looks like they outsourced that entire program to Genesis. So now Genesis has essentially gone bust. It looks like not only are you not going to get paid your interest, you've probably also la- lost the collateral you put in. And, and that's doing it on Gemini. And so this is something, again, obviously I've never really looked into this thing, but it's even if you're on a very compliant exchange, which I think Gemini, you know, along with probably Coinbase and Kraken were the, are the three that I probably would put at the top. I see Gemini and Coinbase have both had big worries this week. Kraken hasn't yet, but even <laughs> it, inside Gemini, there's just a massive part of their business that is being run by shitcoin traders. And when that blows up, their business blows up. And this is the whole... Did Gemini have a shitcoin? I I don't think they have their own shitcoin. They have a stable coin, I think. So they're the same as... Yeah. I think they're the same as Coinbase. So to be fair to Coinbase and Gemini and Kraken, I think they all have their own stable coin, but they don't... Gemini dollar. Yeah, they don't have... It's not a coin that can go up in value. Basically, it's pegged to the dollar. Yeah. Whereas FTX, Binance, and a lot of the other kind of smaller exchanges, they have a token like crypto.com. They have a token that has benefits with it and can go up in value. So if, you, if you've got a token, it's a stable coin. You go, well, okay, you're actually encouraging people to, they are, because they obviously they still invest that money, but they invest that money and get one or 2%. They don't invest it and try and get 100, 200%. Um. Okay. Yeah, kind of like look at this, but I think from what I've read, the um the funds are kind of like separated, so there's no kind of like worry of spillover between um between um the DeFi and the kind of exchange. Yeah, but they would say that, right? Yeah, well, and yeah. and and this is another thing actually, and I wanted to uh, not put it in the show notes, but today I had a conversation with somebody who shall remain nameless, but worked at Amber Group and was very high up within the group. I mean, no one listens to this show and it's getting cancelled, so I can may as well say it. And uh, and that, this person said that Amber Group had 10% of their funds uh, linked to FTX. Now, if you look out, into the media and i'll put it in our chat here and of course we can always link it back to the show notes but they've said that they had no or little exposure to the ftx collapse on the 10th of november they are already laying people off even further and uh, they said that they won't be doing any further projects for the foreseeable now this is a huge company that sponsors um you know they're, they're sponsoring chelsea football club um they threw in 20 mil for uh chelsea so they're on the armband you know trading as whale fin and so uh there's a lot more that is going to be happening in the space you're just not seeing it right now because they're telling you one thing but doing another something just to throw into the last one so this is on the gemini bit in the comments it's one of the top comments from matt spack whoever the fuck he is this is something start with something bad if people are putting their funds in in a the funds themselves should be protected at a one-to-one and you should have access to those funds which own users do not but it's like if you're putting it in earn, you're lending the money out yeah. So it's never going to be backed one to one. Otherwise, Gemini would be doing it. Okay. Um, and 
I understand the interest earned is in question, but this is bad. It's just like this person has yeah. no under, understanding. It's like you want your cake and to eat it. Where but, is the ten percent coming from? Like they yeah. have to give it to someone. Yeah. If if you if you throw in a bit, if you put a bitcoin and we go, oh, I want to earn money on that, and they go, oh, we're going to lend that out. Then they put a bitcoin there. They might as well have just got the bitcoin which they put to protect it. Yeah. To lend out, the it's just anyone says they'll give you one percent on your money. It means they're giving it to someone else. It means it's gone. It means there's a risk of total yeah. loss. And I just, I just read that. I think that's you know the lack of financial understanding. And I think you know that is an average person. You know yeah. this isn't just an absolute moron. I this think... is an average person with no understanding. Yeah, just thinking, Gemini, you need to be better than that. Like, so not only do you have to loan out all that money, oh, you should also have a spare one-to-one -one matching of every... Like, what? What, in case it goes bust? Why Why would they bail you out? You accepted the risk. If it goes pop, because literally, I'm sure within the T's and C's, if they click some buttons in that earn program, it would have said, this is a risk. Capital exactly. is a risk of total loss. And they just went, accept. I just want my 10%. Give me my 10%. And then the 10% yeah. never comes and they get total loss and they go, and then they cry foul. You know, they play silly games and win silly prizes. So. And then moving on, I mentioned Coinbase before <laughs> just briefly. So we've got nothing official from Coinbase as a business being in trouble other than some rumours. But the CEO sold a load of shares was it yesterday? And uh Never good yeah. when the CEO starts selling a load of shares. It's normally a sign that something's about to come out and the price is about to go. Obviously, they're already 88% down. The mm, yeah. it's, it's probably nothing. Everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> like now, now, what's interesting, house. isn't it? Yeah, with them, they are a publicly listed company. And um, I was reading earlier on the fact that, you know, Coinbase hold. 2 million Bitcoin, which was valued at 39.9 billion worth of dollars as of uh, the 30th of September. So, you know, everything with these guys is transparent and uh, and obviously a lot clearer than your normal exchange. Yeah, the, the only problem is, because uh, they are, yeah, because they, normally they have to list their, their liabilities as well. Yeah. Obviously, um, like FTX could have done this. They could have. Mm. They could have had just. Um, obviously, they're doing shitcoin as well. So you just print as much as you need. Like, how much money do I need to show? I've got. Okay, I'll just print that. I'll print that much. And um, and obviously, you can print it in, and show wallets that actually aren't owned by them. It could be in Alameda. Yeah. It could be whatever. Yeah. And, and obviously, if there's liabilities on top of you, even if you go, oh yeah, we've got ten billion under management. And you go, here's ten billion. What you don't know is there's 20 billion worth of debt over there. But yeah, Coinbase should be fine. But there's been a lot of rumors come out in the last 24 hours that Coinbase have lost a significant amount of Bitcoin. And who knows? You know, they've been doing various own programs. I, I would be amazed if they weren't affected somehow. So I, I don't think any exchange comes out unscathed from this because they all shit coined and the shit coins have gone wrong. So when it goes wrong this badly, that they're all exposed to these hedge funds that were printing money. They all thought it was free money. So I'm I'd be amazed if Coinbase come out unscathed. But yeah, I I just this is yet another reminder to go. No matter which exchange you're on, just take custody of your funds. There's just 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 do it because there couldn't be a better time to do it than now because every single exchange could just stop withdrawals tomorrow. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if anyone did it. So we got our next one, everyone's favorite shitcoin, the mother arsehole of all shitcoins, Ethereum. Yeah, sorry, just on that, I was, didn't Ooh. realize I'd, I'd coughed and was on uh, mute. But just imagine that if every exchange decided, that's it, we're not, for the next couple of months, we're just going to hold all funds. Yeah, Easily okay. happen, because I'm sure it's probably in the T's and C's that we all signed. Oh, it definitely is, yeah, because literally if, if they run out of money, then they run out of money. But it'll be yeah. one of them where it'll, it'll really wash out 
the the idiots and then there'll be a couple of exchanges that will pop up and go we haven't paused withdrawals and they will get all our money won't they that everyone will go okay that's yeah. why i'll do my bitcoin dca these are the yeah. bitcoin boys so they didn't shit coin that's what we need we need a cleanse i said it, it before these cleanses are brilliant they they make sure that everyone that's that bull is bullshitting everyone that was being reckless in a bear market, they get exposed, they get wiped out. This is the natural cleanse that we should have. This is this is what doesn't happen in fear. In the fear mm. world, loads of companies, there's loads of zombie companies, zombie countries, because they'll get bailed out, money printing saves them. We don't get this culling. We don't get the learning. So in, in Bitcoin now, obviously there's BlockFi, there's all these things, and people are getting very comfortable with, yeah, it's great, you can loan your Bitcoin, get 10%, da 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 All those people got wrecked. The companies get wrecked. Now everyone has to go back to scratch and they'll build that product again, but they'll build it better. They'll build it smarter. This is what good kind of evolution of a new financial industry looks like. The old space, obviously the, the old banks all did the same in 2008. They've done it multiple times before. What changed there? What learnings did we get? None. Because they just got bailed out. Everyone that was responsible at Golden Handshakes and got retired early worth millions. And then they just carry on and they make the same mistakes again. Nothing, no, no learning happens. The, the pain didn't happen. You need the pain to have learnings and then you rebuild from the ashes. Bitcoin's getting that now. And um, it's, it's why every, every time we get a cleanse like this, we get stronger. Whereas fiat doesn't learn from its mistakes. I was going to say, it's not Bitcoin. This is just general shit coining and all sorts. Yeah. You know, that's just, what, it's the only reason I say BlockFi because there's plenty of Bitcoiners, like we've said, McCormack, Pomp, Going Parabolic. They're Bitcoiners. They know Bitcoin. They were. I was just about to mention these guys, shilling, and it's shilling block yeah. Back. So yeah, and, it's and they funny won't do how they they, they, no. they learn their lesson. But it's funny how they have um, obviously changed their tune naturally, but it, it's kind of like they've re- forgot completely. They've they've held their hands up, said sorry. Oh, but let's just move on. And they haven't really felt a lot of pain. Wait, did you listen to the Flagrant podcast? It's Ooh, with, no. Andrew, with Andrew Schultz. He's a comedian. I was listening to it just before we came on air. His his guest today, Anthony Pompliano. Oh. And he got all those boys into Bitcoin at the top. And he also shielded BlockFi to the hill. He comes in and they just are ripping him to shreds for the first 30 minutes. That's what I've listened to so far. Being like, where the fuck's my block five Bitcoin pump? <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> technically, you haven't lost your money. Okay, you've lost your money, but I lost yeah. my money too. Da, 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 da. And so he gets, a, he's getting a lot of shit. I like Andrew Schultz. Looks, yeah, yeah. Okay. And he looks a bit broken. He look, pump looks a bit of a broken man, to be fair. Yeah. So he's um, yeah. He's a bit broken. I guess his brothers have because... called, gone back to their fiat jobs as well, because of course they were on the. Uh, the, the the best business show once upon a time giving out bitcoin in the high days right is that, and, uh, that yeah that that's no more oh wow oh yeah. that that stopped around about a couple of months ago now yeah oh. i mean he even had his sister and his wife on at times as well you know everything you know what you're wearing a gray jumper today here have some free bitcoin <laughs> Everyone was getting uh, in hindsight, it was so clearly the fucking top. But yeah. Anyway, but yeah, we mentioned it. We were talking about Ethereum anyway, weren't we? And um, the only yeah. reason we're talking about Ethereum is because they've also because we love it so much. No, because, <laughs> because that's the thing, right? So they they created this Ethereum thing, and they wanted to make sure that Ethereum two point or whatever. So you had to stake your Ethereum one to basically fund Ethereum too. And people have done this about two years ago. And they were like, oh, it's fine. Like you'll, you'll get your money back probably in 2022. And then six to 12 months you have to stake. And then it's up to you. You can take your money back. You'll get more money than you put in. And then they said it, then they said it was 2024. So that another two years ahead, it's going to take until you get your unstaked, um, your Bitcoin um, Ethereum back. But now they've removed the date completely, which just shows what Ethereum essentially is doing is and probably is the only reason the price is as high as it is on Ethereum is a load of ETH heads 
have locked their Ethereum up in this new coin, the new Ethereum 2.0, and they're now just banning people from selling it. So that's a great <laughs> way to keep your shitcoin price up. Just lock it all up. I can guarantee Vitalik and all his mates, they're dumping their ETH. I can guarantee that. But yeah. all the plebs that were like, yeah, I'll stake it and support Ethereum 2.0, when can you take it out? When can you sell it? When can when can you even fucking just use it? Like if you do believe in ETH and you believe in the metaverse and all that stuff, you need your ETH to go into the metaverse and buy a freaking balaclava and a tutu to walk around the metaverse like a little perv. Well, you can't even do that. So um, my favorite about this is one of the top comments. ETH stakers will get their money back before FTX people likely even before Mount Gox people who have been waiting a decade, settle down. Cope. <laughs> and it's just like, my God, I mean, you're looking at, well, FTX, a massive Ponzi scheme, and then Mount Gox, which was, well, a massive implosion, wasn't it? Before you could really take custody of, well, an average person could take custody of Bitcoin and you try and compare it to the fact that you're in a now centralised network, which um, isn't doing what it promised. Hmm. yet again well i can see a bitcoin a reply to that being like if you put that in the right context those two scams will take longer to resolve than this scam yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. amusing how they admit defeat by trying to argue their scam is less scammy than other scams <laughs> <laughs> about, imagine trying to like have our bitcoiners and like, like bitcoin was just stuck i like, just imagine this right so Im imagine this was lightning or like some form of bitcoin and they forced all the all the developers came out and went to even have this update we all have to stake all of our bitcoin to get the update and then the update comes out and they go oh you can't take it out yet and they go okay but it's coming out soon right like oh no like two years it's coming out you go oh two years fuck okay and then eventually they just delete the two years and go oh, no at some point like how would we be feeling right now? I'd be like, fuck Bitcoin. Ugh. Fuck it. Uh, yeah, ex exactly. I'm not, I didn't want to sell it, but I want control. This is the whole point. I'm meant to be self-sovereign. If I want to sell it, if I want to move it, I want to be able to do what the fuck I want with my Bitcoin. I don't care. What the hell is the network telling me what to do for? And this is what's happening on Ethereum right now. It's just nuts. But again, play silly games, win silly prizes. There we go. Right, next story. Where are we up to? So turn the CEO. This is the biggie. Pause withdrawals. Yeah, this is a biggie. If DCG goes bust, then prepare your pants. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh digital currency group, if they go bust, then that could uh mean the fall of 3AC, which hurts Genesis and Grayscale. So therefore. We are in maybe for the 12K number and below. You know, it's coming. Because yeah, um, it's grayscale, we, right? Gray, grayscale are the biggie, right? So 3AC and Genesis, they've already gone pop. They're two yeah. massive hedge funds. Yeah, we talked about AC a month or two ago, didn't we? They're the original. They, they, they went pop due to Luna. Luna went yeah. pop. That took 3AC down. And then we've got FTX seemingly took... Um, Genesis down, and now we got DCG, which is a digital currency group. That but that's grayscale, and they have a shit ton of Bitcoin. Yeah, because they the the GBTC that is essentially the one that people are putting into their pensions. If you want to buy paper Bitcoin on the stock market, people buy GBTC, and there were billions and billions and billions of it, and. If these guys go bust, the amount of Bitcoin they hold and they're going to have to liquidate, it's going to be a little bit scary, that one. Weirdly, to, weirdly today on LinkedIn, someone at DCG has viewed your profile. Mm, it's weird. Must want a job. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's this, this is a biggie. It's uh, so I. It doesn't surprise me because all hedge funds seem to be going bust right now. They all seem to be being reckless, but there's a massive article that we've linked here where someone has just done a load of investigative work. It's a massively long article, 
where they're reading through the basically the like the finances of each of Genesis, 3AC, and then Digital Currency Group. And they're pulling it all together. And that what they're realizing is the Digital Currency Group, which is the big one in Grayscale, they haven't come out and said that they're in trouble at all. But what they seem to have exposed is they must be in trouble because there's huge amounts of Bitcoin and Ethereum moving about. And it's appearing at 3AC, just as DCG sent a load of money. And they're like, it didn't go to 3AC. It was weird because the amount you sent, that's how much they received. And then it's the same at Genesis. And they've managed to go on the blockchain and see these transactions and try and theorize that these people, these three companies are all intrinsically li linked. So if 3AC has gone down, plus Genesis has gone down, then that means DCG are massively in the hole because they had a load of their money. They were all loaning money to each other. So therefore, they have to be insolvent. That's the theory. Yeah, hmm. and, and this is the one which may signal the bottom. We say may because you can't be certain what the hell's going on at the moment. It's just one story after another, because I know we started off heavily FTX focused, but we've got all the repercussions here. Correct. I mean, we've seen, or I know we've talked about it offline, 134 companies exposed to FTX. And we've mentioned a couple on this, on this chat, you know, uh, Amber Group, we've mentioned uh, Gemini, potentially Coinbase and others. It, it, it just keeps on spiraling, doesn't it? They came from nowhere in 2019. And it's like they just literally fucked the whole industry. Yeah. Like I said, well, the, the thing that I would hold on to is when yeah, I look at Twitter now and even our little chat, everyone is bearish. And it tends to be once everybody is bearish and super confident we're going lower, that's the bomb. Because mm. people aren't right. Because at the moment, if this is all true, right, just short Bitcoin. Like I would short Bitcoin right now to earn more Bitcoin. Yeah. I'm not fucking gunning. Because I just don't trust it. I can just see the, I can see, well, I'll wake up tomorrow and Bitcoin will be 10K up. <laughs> because the market is always wrong. Like, whatever the majority of people think, it's wrong. So at the moment, I'm just seeing so many people, especially when, once this grayscale news broke, that was the last of the positive people turned negative and went, oh, fuck. They own like, I don't know, a million Bitcoin, sent me fucking nuts. If they're insolvent and they need to sell that to pay creditors, well, that's that's Bitcoin fucked. So let's go. Something's going to happen where it, it doesn't happen that way, and we. Mm. And we fun. But you know, maybe I'm just being. So I actually tweeted this, going this because could be the bottom, and then someone actually replied with, "Well, you're bullish, so it's not the bottom." I'm like fuck. Maybe I'm the signal. Maybe I need to turn bearish, and I'm 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 still holding on. So I need it's to turn end up bearish. It's going to end up like at four pound fifty before you go back. <laughs> I know. I, I, I'm tempted just to get negative and be like, "Oh yeah, Bitcoin's fucked. We're going to we're going below ten k," and then boom, you know, it will prove me wrong. But I just don't believe it at the moment. I just, yeah, I just too many people think we're going down, going down. So I think we're going up. Oh, I feel like we're going down further, and I've been tracking it as I said again just before we started recording uh, for the last. Well, well, for the last 30 days, we've still just been going further and further down last two months and looking at my fills. Yeah, we went up the, um, the silver lining is you can get um, Bitcoin on, on sale just in time for Black Friday. Absolutely. It's all there to be had. Great. Um, oh, yeah, we're back to FDX, aren't we? Yep. Yeah. So we've got this whole can't leave it alone. It's like that girlfriend just keeps yeah. coming it, back. I think it's um I think this article which you linked, it's to Twitter, but then it's to everyone's favorite impartial publication, the Washington Post. <laughs> owned by Jeff. Yeah. I'm owned by the WEF Bezios. Yeah, you can always trust the Washington Post to give a nice impartial view. 
Yeah. I mean, he's used that. some of that stolen money to uh, buy himself a, an article in it, surely. Well, probably a few articles, because it wouldn't surprise me if he bought a uh, a block package, you know, <laughs> throughout the uh, throughout the year or throughout the next 12 months, I need a minimum of five articles written about me that are good regardless. And obviously, if if shit hits the fan, then I still need it because you've got the money. Well, it, so they're it's, doing. it's also the big problem is the Washington Post is a renowned left-leaning publication. And it's one of the first posts, which is a um, really good um, meme, is two buttons. What on earth do we do? Um, Sam um, stole 10 billion. We press that, or do we press some donated money? So it's literally, you know, like if you claim one, the other one's true. So it's a fact that those donations to the Democrats are actually um, stolen money. Yes. So that money needs to go back to the end consumers. So it's that's why there's this whitewashing going on. I think he's almost untouchable because we talked about mm. him earlier in his conversation to was it Vox, and he's saying horrendous stuff about regulators he's saying horrendous stuff about esg but they're still not turning on it yeah. and this what's, is what's the headline in this article right it says before ftx collapse founder poured millions into pandemic prevention so they're acknowledging this article is about the collapse of a 10 billion dollar company but they're already going oh but you put millions into pandemic prevention they're already making excuses in the headline and and it collapsed. It wasn't done by fraud and basically building up a Ponzi. Yeah, and where did the millions for pandemic prevention come from? Stolen mm. from customers. Yeah. And and he's admitted uh, that was woke virtue signaling to make people like him. But also <laughs> that that pandemic prevention, where did it go? Government, it Democrats. So literally it's being funneled. It went in. to his brother first and then to yeah. the Dems, yeah. And has it actually been used for anything? No. Yeah, like the yeah. workshops would be, oh, we'll write off a million for that, we'll write off 10 million for that, bang, it's all gone, about 50 million, which is donated. Yeah, and then the Washington Post, do they include any screenshots from Vox? Do they include any of his weird tweets where he's just being fucking cryptic doing... <laughs> da, da, da. No, they, 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 they include two tweets of Sam's, and it's of his big thread going, my goal, my one goal to do right by customers. I'm contributing what I can can by doing so. I'm meeting in person with regulators, working with the team to do what we can for customers. And after that, investors. But first, customers. My goal, clean up and focus on transparency. B, make customers whole. They're the best tweets that Sam's put out to completely whitewash and make him look like a good guy that he's working on customers. Everything else he's sent, fucking is setting fire to everything. Every interview he's done is completely undoing this pretend character he's created and exposing his real personality. But the Washington Post picked those two tweets. And if you're just a random viewer and don't really know much about Sam, don't know much know about FTX, you would read this thinking, I got unlucky, but he's a really nice guy and he's doing his best to make his customers whole. This is, He's making the best of a bad situation. Poor lad. Yeah. Because there will be, and I know it's strange to us because we're deep down into this, you know, crazy hole that is Bitcoin. But there are people that don't even know what Bitcoin is. So they'll just see this article and just think, hmm, okay, fair enough. It's just, unfortunately, we said it last week, right? We, I was going, I don't want the conspiracy to be right. I don't want sam and caroline to be part of the elite and this can be a complete uh, inside trojan horse job i want to see sam and caroline hundred and quarters and have the book thrown at them to just go they're just bad actors that were greedy if this ends up being what we think it's being and they're going to whitewash it and then these guys are going to get super lean sentences if anything then it just confirms these were state actors pretending to be crypto bitcoiners and um, they were here to do damage and by hell, they did some damage. Because the next one is from Forbes. And this one is on our favorite crypto queen, Caroline. And um, they've edited this um, headline since we um, linked it. 
because they got a lot of shit. Because in the headline, bizarrely, they were they've thrown her a it's... little bit more under the bus, but they're still making it look like to be a quant and all that. But they said that she was a darling of the alt right. Oh, here we go. Found me original. So Queen Caroline, the wrist loving twenty nine year old and broad and the FTX collapse. So it's got the age thrown in there and risk loving and embroiled and then it's also got some subtext um she is one of the supporting players in sam bankman freed's ftx catastrophe and a new darling of the alt-right yeah yeah when you read the article there's nothing that backs up the alt-right claim nothing and they they promptly deleted that bit it's been removed now and there's no um record of it on the actual article but even the article is kind of whitewashing caroline and then suggesting that the people that are kind of finding this like funny which i guess is us which surprise surprise are we the alt right because we have to be right we have to be because we don't find this funny well i was also looking at um another well similar scandal which was elizabeth holmes and uh the theranos fraud and she was given 11 years and three months and she was very similar in terms of um i guess i guess her relations with the elite and yet she has faced prison time and been convicted now whether or not she will actually do all full 11 years and three months in prison will be seen. Initially, she was facing 20 years and the prosecution were recommending 15 years in prison. And uh, whilst obviously the defence were urging no prison time. So it's not beyond the wit of man that he won't face any prison time whatsoever. But again, time will tell. And and just to... yeah, because. The 11 years, I think it's relatively fair because all she did really is she took investor funds and then essentially lied that the product was was possible to build. She, she mm. thought, I think she did think it was possible at the beginning. She's a little bit over optimistic. And at some point during it, she then st- started committing fraud and then lying about results. And But all she took was investor money. Sam took investor mm. money more than Elizabeth Holmes then launched a product, and then the worst thing he did was took customer funds. He then went to the public, let them put, and then he took that money, gave it to another company, invested it, lied. at The levels of, and the amount of different levels of fraud Sam's committed compared to Elizabeth Holmes, he's 10x. And also the value of what he stole is 10x. So Also, kind of going back to this article, so we're kind of going away from the point of it because it talks about embroiled, in the catastrophe in the original and it's darling of, of the alt-right the new one is queen caroline the fake charity nerd girl behind the ftx collapse so yeah. let's point out here she was not the ceo of ftx she was the ceo of Almeida, and she'd only been ceo for a couple of months wasn't it yeah so she's so she, the she, CEO, but it's the right yeah, fake ceo of a different company and so she had not caused the fundamental issues which were bringing this all down. This was done before her time. But, you know, she may have caused some things. But, yeah, she's she, now... Well, she probably couldn't have stopped them because the snowball was already in effect. But 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 the Forbes says she's behind the FTX collapse. Do you mm. not believe the Forbes? Are you a Nazi? <laughs> <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> so it seems like Sam is getting a free pass off this. And it kind of, I suppose, um, our conspiracy theories of a week or two ago are starting to become true. Well, it'll be interesting, isn't it? Because both of them, are, you know, comes from, you know, very wealthy backgrounds. So will either face any jail time? You know, they could easily blame one another. I, but... I just think that she was put in for a reason. Yeah, it looks she, like Caroline is the full girl. Yeah. You've seen her in an interview. She's very well connected for her father, but she seems like an absolute moron who should not mm-hmm. have been in that position. You know, it says maths nerd and quant. She's not a quant. I doubt she's a maths nerd either. No, it, it looks yeah. like Sam Sam in his 
the, the guy that left, they're the insiders. They're the state actors. And then Caroline came in to be the full, like the patsy for Alameda. And Sam didn't quite get out in time. And it yeah, collapsed it, it, before he yeah. got out. Maybe, you know, it was obvious three months ago that all this was happening. I made advice to do because it's a fact that he's got away so well of this so far anyway. Yeah, yeah, so far. Yeah, you can just tell by the media, right? So at the moment, the media were being super positive about Sam, talk about everything good in the world. Whereas Caroline straight away associated it to the alt-right, calling her like a fake CEO. It looks like, the thing is that she'll still go to an upper-class female prison, maybe do five years, Whereas Sam, I think that they're they're gearing up to get, get Sam completely off scot free, which mm. we and based on like blame here, Caroline in reality, I think she's just a bit of an idiot that got in with the wrong crowd. Sam yeah. is the guy that did all this. He's the guy that uh, deserves real jail time. And the way it's going, it looks like he's going to get away with it. Yeah, because I think she's been brought in from connections for whatever company she's worked for, because it does seem like she's very connected. She's not brought in as a brilliant mind. <laughs> they probably figured like we'll we'll pin all the blame on her, and then her dad will get her off because she's the head of the SEC. Well, anyway. maybe this is why she's classed as a um, a favourite of the alt right, because we are Nazis and we are trying to defend her. <laughs> um, but moving on, we've got one. <laughs> um, You're really trying to get us cancelled today. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> Did I say anything bad? Uh, <laughs> Shut up, Nazi. Um, <laughs> but moving on, we've got the Barbados regulators. So there's claims floating around that they took the funds. So I'm guessing this is part of the um, hack. Is this a claim by SBF? Um, it doesn't seem to be very clear where this is coming from. No. Think, no, this is. Um... I mean, it's from the Mail Online, so I'm not oh, too sure of that. You've, uh... you've got to love a bit of Daily Mail, like you yeah. Know, if, it, if it's coming from Sam, he's not exactly had a history of telling the truth in these last few weeks, or even before then, when we've seen him basically admit that all the shit coins which he's producing was a massive co- Ponzi on camera, but everyone seems yeah. to have forgotten that. But I mean, the Mail's got some lovely snippets in here. SEC Chair Gary Gensler. So the link through to Caroline is now under scrutiny over his failure to prevent the implosion of FTX. So not not Sam, he's not blamed in this article. FTX, which is based in the Bahamas due to its relaxed tax laws. So interesting we've had this, and Sam was a massive government supporter, but wasn't willing to pay tax. Um, and he sensationally said blame for the disaster at FTX lay with Almeida Research the trading firm that he founded in 2017 and was run by his on-and-off lover, Harry Potter enthusiast, Caroline Ellison. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's just, the, the, the only reason I like this article, right, it's actually a very, very good summary of the entire thing. And this is on the Daily Mail. And obviously, when you look on the side of like what other recommended articles are, it's all complete fucking garbage, just random like celebrity nonsense. But yeah. The, the Daily oh, Mail but they're here, funny. They are funny. The, the Daily Mail has given a proper good overview here. And they, they pretty much have got the key talking points. They've, they've even got the video of Caroline sat there talking about how she trades and how she doesn't like stop losses. They kind of got everything. They've got his link to Gazelle, the got the link to Tom Brady. They've got the whole timeline of events. And, um, it just shows that they really are, and this is yet another thing that probably like links into is this a conspiracy theory as in they're trying to bring it down, is how do the mainstream media who barely know what Bitcoin is, how do they know FTX and the, the cause of events pretty much spot on from beginning to end? Like, why is this article so good? I read this article looking for mistakes and I couldn't really find any. I went... Every time I've read an article about Bitcoin or even crypto on the Daily Mail, it's been riddled with mistakes. Just mm. the, the, the author clearly doesn't understand the space and they get a lot of stuff wrong. This one, like, they've got it right from beginning to end. 
I know. With, uh, relevant pictures, you know, stuff like uh, so what's Bill your Clinton cons- and Tony What's your Blair? conspiracy theory? Is that this is just being, this is a state actor and they've got their stories completely straight and they know exactly what narrative they want to spin, which is crypto is dangerous. Don't invest in it. Sam's awesome. He made a mistake, but forgive him. But trust the government and don't don't, don't trust government um, crypto. Crypto and Bitcoin, you just lose your money. These are the people you're trusting. You know, this you know what? Caroline girl, Sam. Sam's all right. You don't want to trust him. And look at Caroline. Fucking idiot. Like it's Harry Potter. She's his little 30 second video of her being a moron. These are the head people in crypto. These are these are the big guys trying to overthrow government, you know, separating money and state. Just stick with your feet. Yes. I'm a normie this is that. a way for them to um to ease in CBDCs and using exactly, this yes. story. Exactly. Yeah. And, it's just and we'll, pro- and we'll protect you trust. from and we'll protect you from ever buying crypto again because you won't be able to on CBDCs. Yeah, right. it's just throwing mistrust. It's just what why is this so well researched, so well written? It, because it's a bad thing. Because it's negative. It's, and it's the most negative thing that's probably happened in five years in, in crypto yeah. slash Bitcoin. And so they just nailed it. And you go, what the f- where, where were all your good journalists when good stuff was happening in Bitcoin? Where, where's the good journalist writing about the El Salvador converting them to a Bitcoin standard? That I saw the article on that. It was fucking shit. Why is this one so good? Mm. What's what's even better me article, though, are the comments. I love your comments on Daily Mail. So the first <laughs> comment was, why, yeah, for the tea. why isn't this bozo in an orange jumpsuit reply? Um, no, it's not. He's No, he's not. He's the second biggest Democratic donor um, because he's second um, largest Democrat donor behind Soros. Yeah, that's it. Nothing to see here, folks. Move along. <laughs> then the FBI is allowing him and his cohorts plenty of time to destroy all the evidence that links FTX to Ukraine, Democrats, shadow... PACs, which I don't know what it was, an illegal electioneering activity because the dirty launder that Ukraine money is being filtered back to the Democrats. <laughs> yeah, I do love the comments. <laughs> but what's interesting, the kind of like headline here is about the Bahamas. And um, I failed to get this put into the, sh- into the show notes in time for the show, but it's one which I'm pulling up from the Cointelegraph. And there's actually been analysis about where these funds have gone. So chain analysis of Paul Coldwater on the theory stating that yeah. reports that the funds stolen from FTX were actually sent to the Securities Commission of the Bahamas are incorrect. Some funds were stolen and the other funds were sent to the regulators. All right. So some did go to the regulators. Yeah, so it's been sent and they're obviously storing it. So there are definite hacks, but... Was it one of the exchanges? Was it Kraken say that they know who's got the funds? Yeah, so some of the funds hit Kraken, yeah, and they, they know who did it, so they, and they've frozen it, yeah. They've, they've handed it over to authorities. It's it's very dodgy, right? Because everyone, straight away, like a, a regulator in, in Barbados, they, they don't just go into a company the day it goes bust and transfer all the money out. It's not what happens. You have to just leave everything it is as it is, and that's why mm, you bring in... It's like a crime scene, isn't it? Yeah, literally. Yeah, you don't just run in and grab the body and throw it outside. You're like, no, fucking leave it there. Like, you need to know where it was. <laughs> yeah. just don't stop moving everything around. Like, what account every all the money is in? And and as all has audit trails, and in your you're disrupting that. And and also, you just don't know enough, do you? You don't know enough on day one just to go send us a load of money. It just looks dodgy. If if anything, yeah. it, it, I would say that looks like a payoff. That's a payoff to the Barbados authorities to go, don't arrest me and don't pause my passport. I might need to leave. And then they stole the rest of the money. That's what I guess it is. Yeah. So there's also a follow on story from this. So once again, sticking with the FTX theme, um, there's more evidence that Sam is in the club. Sounds very much like a conspiracy theory. Look at these four. Fuck me. So who (laughs) was Sam speaking with at a planned event? So it was planned for the end of November. And Sam, looking quite slim and handsome in his picture, which he isn't, um, 
is speaking with Zelensky. Think Yellen. What a collection. Yeah. It's I kind of look at this kind of event and you've got a president, you've got Larry Fink, who's the CEO of one of the biggest investment groups in the world. You've got oh, the biggest, Janet, the biggest. Oh, yeah. you got to say got, BlackRock. Say BlackRock. Yeah, and you've got Yellen, who has worked various um, various um, positions within the government, but currently um, US um, Secretary, Department of Treasury. So, you know, really high up. And to have someone as a speaker at this event, you're kind of going, they'd have to be, you don't just allow a random, some random pube haired um, um, fatty on stage. It's got to be heavily vetted. There'll no be ins and outs. Even his company would be vetted to get that close to these kind of people. So you kind of go, they knew this was coming. Well, he's mm. like I said, it's the well this donation. was planned for a week from now, wasn't it, in terms of the 30th of November. So it's not happened and clearly it won't happen. Yeah, the event will probably still go still go ahead, but sadly yeah. it won't be there. And it's two thousand four hundred dollars for a ticket. Like, who, who the fuck's paying that? And it's, yeah. it's and it's just um like an evening with these more ones. And, and clearly, Zelensky must be uh, coming via video link, surely. Yeah. Well, Zelensky's no. making a surprising amount of appearances, seeing as he's supposed to be in the middle of a fucking war. No, exactly. He, goes, he was doing a video, I think, I saw on Twitter, some, like, music video, when practicing yeah, around. around. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, you, you, just seeing Sam on this list being, like, with, the, with Ukraine, Black Rock, and then the fucking Fed, you go, what, what more evidence do you need to know that he's in the Yeah, club and he's untouched? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you ultimately... Like, you sound like conspiracy theorists. It's just, yeah. You, you, because it's just, he stands out, right? He, he, on that list. You, if, you just, if you just leave the rest of them there and take Sam off, you go, okay, it's one of those fucking elitist bollocks meetings where all the super big hitters go go to hear how to be the best of the best you know you've got the head of the treasury ceo of blackrock and then you know the president of ukraine you go okay it's that's the kind of event that plebs don't have access to this is the big yeah. heavy hitters go but then you've got sam sat there and you go what the fuck's that little dweeb doing there yeah. I mean, just it's... looking at some of the other people that were due to be there, you've got Zuckerberg, uh, you had the CEO of TikTok. Um, who else was there? President and CEO of Amazon. So all super, oh, you know, president, no, founder and co-CEO. But you think about Netflix. this kind of like stage, they're all going to be sitting around in their suits looking super smart and he'll be in, their, in his shorts and his... Yeah. Um, poorly formed t-shirt and wild hair and you're kind of going you know they wouldn't allow that type of person on stage unless it was for a purpose yeah well they have before you know in terms of you know he sat with uh tony blair and and bill clinton that's because no i'm saying if it wasn't him oh like in his kind of position they wouldn't allow that kind of person yeah he'd be be stopped by security and be like put a tie on like what the fuck yeah yeah and comb that hair <laughs> but yeah, the way, the, these types of events usually this is the money laundering event where you get paid three four million dollars for turning up and they justify it because oh the ticket prices are really high and it's where hillary and clinton you know yelling this is when you see their tax return yelling will get three million dollars for going to this event because supposedly that's what people paid to hear us speak they didn't they didn't this is just I mean, um, Yellen, the, um, the, the, um, who has such masterful understanding of economics that she has zero interest rate and um, 3% inflation, causing one of the biggest bubbles ever. Hmm. She'd be a good speaker. She knows what she's doing. Nothing to see here. <laughs> I'd actually love to go to the event. I don't reckon there's even anyone there. I don't reckon they even say anything. It's just... <laughs> we need to put you on the agenda and pretend that people paid this. You'll get three million for this is just the bribe. Yeah, it's the bribe. Yeah. This, is, this is how we get the money to you. But in exchange, Yellen, you need to do this. BlackRock CEO, you need to do that. Zelensky, you need to say this. Sam, you need to 
wreck the whole crypto space. And mm. uh, in exchange, we will deposit X amount of dollars in your bank accounts. And you just go, okay, that sounds pretty <laughs> sweet. And it's all covered up by the fact that, oh, well, what's the paper trail behind these payments? You go, they, they came to this event. It's a very high profile event and people paid two and a half grand to be there. Of course, we had plenty of money to pay them $3 million each. It's just, this corruption is right out in plain plain sight. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, staying on the subject of, um, of Sam, um, we had a story which has actually changed it. it has it been edited? Because we've got Almeida loaned Sam 4.1 billion. But looking at the tweet, it says yes. FTX right. lent Sam Bankman Freed over 3.3 billion. Um, you know, I've heard a let's wide not, range. Not to get, let's say specifically for personal. Yeah. Use. <laughs> it's still billies. It's it's not, you know, like lending them a tenner. It's still over a billion. So I've heard a range of one billion to five billion quoted in various different sources. So we know it's a national nominal amount and a fifteenth of what has gone missing, which is on the books as being lent to him. Um and then also we know that his CTO was lent at least 500 million we know that the company bought various properties and there's probably loans for hundreds of millions elsewhere as well um i've been watching a lot of uh and reading a lot of this go gavin guy yeah he's been he seems to have an inside track on mm. Yeah, there's been some good Twitter accounts that seem to have managed to get access to, I think, FTX employees that have access yeah. to certain documentation, and then they're just le leaking it all through Twitter. So again, this is unverified. We don't know. So yeah, I think there's two tweets, actually, I think. So our media, it said they loaned him what, like 4.1 billion. And then there's another tweet that said FTX loaned him 3.3 billion. And I've got, the, I've got the links mixed up. But just those two, that's 7.4 billion. Oh, um, you reckon in total? Well, yeah, there was there was two tweets, and I've only copied one in here, and it's just and who knows, right? They they don't link to anything substantial, so this could be just Twitter people being trolls. We we don't know, but well, we've seen it. It's been in various publications, like I said, between one and five. Even though it's one, it's still an astronomical amount of money which has disappeared into the ether, and is ultimately customer funds. Yeah, is it? Yeah, that's the thing. And then even if it's one billion, two billion, seven billion, you're just stealing from customers directly, and it's just pretty. Um, and also, I know we've not put this in the show notes, and I've not seen too much more on it. But uh, Tom Brady and Steph Curry are being investigated for promoting FTX. Yeah, but nothing's going to happen with that. No, they were just they they were fooled like everyone. There's no way mm. which someone like that will be got for this because it's not like Tom Brady or anyone who's sponsored by a product goes into that product and rips it apart on the company. But especially yeah. when they would have lost money themselves as well. Yeah, exactly. It's rumoured that Tom Brady and his, um, I'm guessing now ex-wife, um, lost quite a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's always very common when these shit coins, and obviously this is a bigger one, the whole exchange goes bust. I've seen Kim Kardashian, Floyd Mayweather, him, you name it, every celebrity under the sun has been hit by these lawsuits. They, they don't tend to really go anywhere. Well, it's also, yeah. he was he was advertising a um, an exchange. It wasn't a shit coin as such. Yeah, exactly. True. So well, I just think... Shit, the whole exchange was a Ponzi, that's the problem. Yeah, but it's <laughs> literally, you know, like... He didn't know. I agree. He didn't know. Yeah. He wasn't in um... on this game. So you don't no. get punished. But um but yeah, our next story is again it feeds into the conspiracy theory because oh look, they're using this now as an excuse to overregulate the space. So Joe Bo Joe Biden leads critical call for game changing global Bitcoin and crypto rules after shock FTX collapse. So see, this is what we you know, this is what we said, right? This is it all feeds into the conspiracy, which is you know, the FTX were there to steal a load of money and give them an excuse to regulate it to death. Yeah. And now, so Biden's up there on the fucking stage going, 
we all need to get together to make sure this never happens again. And you go, well, well, how do you guarantee this never happens again? Well, you, you just stop people buying it, right? Limit how much you can buy. Don't let people withdraw ever. And uh, yeah, it's what we feared. It's, and uh, whether this is natural or completely engineered, it's just so predictable because they're just they're just waiting, aren't they? They're waiting in the sidelines. And the second something goes wrong in crypto, they come slamming in and go, we need to save the day and regulate Bitcoin and help you all out. Right, we're fine. Leave us the fuck yeah. alone. I love how we're claiming that Biden said all this and contributed <laughs> when we all know that he was sniffing someone's hair. He didn't write shit. Oh, gosh. Did you guys see his address to the US football team? No. Oh, it was bad. He was just like, best of luck, guys. I know you guys are the underdogs, but you can do it. I've got every faith in you. You Americans. It was it was terrible. It's like, you know, your granddad that was high off meth, just <laughs> giving you that one last... <laughs> um, it's just this whole kind of thing it's you know it's Bernie Madoff part two isn't it but they're trying to blame it on crypto whereas in fact it's the actual formation of a company it used various shell companies it, it inf- artificially inflated um, reserves and liquidity and it's just like but now it's like oh it's all about crypto Whereas actually, mm. it's about the controls surrounding the company, yeah, which are what yeah, needs absolutely. to be sorted. Yeah. Well, imagine yeah. if it was Bernie Madoff. Imagine if they just went right. Yeah, we shouldn't be able to invest in a fund anymore. You, you, we were not going to let people manage your money. We're going to limit it to certain amounts. Like if Bernie Madoff was a state actor, that's what would have happened because they were engineering mm. a way of shutting off the investment space from from the general population. But it wasn't. Bernie Madoff was just a genuine guy who did a Ponzi scheme on his own to make himself rich and famous. And um, obviously it all blew up in his face. And he, he did a hundred years in prison. That's the difference, right? He got, he's he got, done. You mean <laughs> yeah, he, he got he, sentenced to, yeah, he got punished because he hurt the people they don't want to get hurt, which was the rich. Sam has hurt the plebs. Barely yeah. rich got hurt here. He, he hurt the plebs and it seemingly was funded and exited a load of money to the rich. This is why we're seeing a totally different tact around Sam. When and then obviously in this one, straight away, you know, how often would you see something like this happen? Like within what is it, within a week or something of this happening? Biden's already calling an emergency meeting for global leaders as well. This isn't just him doing this to America. <laughs> He's asking for global cooperation for Bitcoin and crypto regulation. This T- tell me this isn't planned. Tell me this isn't orchestrated. And and I can guarantee they've already got the document. They already have the document pre-written and they'll just walk into the meeting and go, this is what we want to do. Yeah. Which are just massive moats around Bitcoin. They'll probably put limits. They're going to want people to KYC to the hilt. They're going to want proof of funds. It's just, just going to be horrendous. They're, they're, they're going to try and regulate Bitcoin to death. So it's virtually unusable. Yeah. Whereas, you know, it's obvious that it was all down to company controls. And the person who, you know, is responsible for that is Gary Gensler. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. How does FTX, like, this obviously for like us three here, like we're all Bitcoiners, we've been in Bitcoin for years now. FTX, like, other than the fact that well, in the general space, it's got nothing to do with Bitcoin. Yet now Bitcoin's going to get fucked because of it. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but there's not enough credible people that are talking about this and deciphering the two. I have started to see more and more people talking about putting the labels of cryptocurrencies into compartments. You have Bitcoin and then you have shit coins. And and this is the and also DeFi. We... I think it's also that distinction between that as well. It's just like yeah. lending on air. Yeah, and obviously we've talked about it a bunch of times, but NFTs as well. But everyone previously just wrapped it all up into one and it all meant one when, you know, yes, everybody listening and you've got this far and, hey, you know, record numbers might not be so record numbers because it's more around 
Bitcoin that we're talking and we have, yeah, you know, we're covering this scandal, but we want to make sure that we are only focused on the positive of what is the industry of Bitcoin moving forward. And uh, and maybe this is the good that has to, that comes out of it. Yeah. Well, the, the perception, right? There's a perception of reality. There's a, yeah. a great image that I, I, I tweeted it out. I stole it from, I think, Reddit. But there's two big bubbles, right? <laughs> Crypto and fiat. And inside the crypto bubble is a small Bitcoin. That's yeah. the perception that Bitcoin's a small part of crypto and you've got fear over here. But the reality is the two bubbles, one is just Bitcoin. And then the fiat bubble has a small bit of crypto in it. That's the reality. Crypto is a fiat, but it's a worse form of fiat. And Bitcoin is completely on its own over here. Bitcoin is not part of crypto. There are a lot of similarities. You know, we talked about FTT, the fact that they were printing out FTT to yeah. kind of like be their collateral for debts. It's fit. Yeah. And it's literally, that is what governments do. They print money out of thin air to cover their debts. Mm. Yeah. Um, oh my God, we got your favorite story of the week. Inflation weekly. <laughs> oh, I can see the desk rising up. <laughs> <laughs> well, the great thing about this is the controls around inflation were changed, weren't they, in the 80s? Late eight was it mid or late 80s? So the measure? So the fact yeah. is, it's a, it's a great as it has been since before the uh, measures were changed to artificially distort inflation, so you know it's fucking bad. Yeah. yeah. What is it now? Exactly. What's, what's UK inflation? 11.1 is it is that what we're saying oof <laughs> oof you know we are yeah bloody, it's a bloody russians yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what saying that we're in double figures since 1981 a lot has happened and they do say that inflation is good for the economy so you think since 1981 we've had innovations such as the mobile phone um nintendo the snes you've had ipod xbox iphone netflix so with this rate of inflation, we should get something along the lines of a SNES times I Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's insane. Like I said, this is before the measures changed. So we have managed to surpass the previous record since they've distorted inflation and the actual impact on our economy. Yeah. So mm. if it actually went back to the original, what would it be? Yeah. It would 15, be... 20. Yeah. Because obviously we know as well that their official numbers, they, they take out energy, they take out red meat. They, they, like the, the real inflation, really, if we really look at the cost, like the average basket of goods, I would say it's near 50 to 100%. Because like how much is a mortgage and energy and food? When you really add that up and compare it to this time last year, how much is the difference? Especially when you take out the fact that I keep getting confused, right, with my energy bill. I keep looking at it and I'm massively in credit. I go, what the fuck's going on? How am I in credit? I'm never in credit. It's because the government keep giving me like £200, £400, and it keeps putting me back in credit again. And I go, what the... I haven't asked for this. And it's just bizarre that like, how much money are they just printing and just giving out? So I mentioned day. this about the government handout and, you know, the response is they've done this through multiple ways. You've got the inflation. You've got the fact there hasn't been investment in infrastructure. So you've been paying your taxes for things like investment in infrastructure, which hasn't been done. And then you've got the price controls, which hid this rise for a few years. So yeah. literally it's like, bang, it's hit you so hard because it's been locked and it caused various energy companies to go under. And that's, you know, what a lot of people don't understand is these price controls artificially contain it until it pops hmm. and it's popped. And even though it's popped, they're now suppressing it just by directly putting money into your energy account and just suppressing it back down again. But in reality, and they're doing that purely because I, that must be their rationale to go, it's only 11%. But I know my energy bill has gone up by 100 to 150 percent. So just that is quite a large percent of the basket of goods. Energy is a decent percent of my basket on a monthly basis. So if that one piece has gone up by 200 percent, 
and rent's gone up, you know. No, uh, 11 mates. is like, any, 11 is nowhere think, near. It's I anywhere. always think them doing this gives them the opportunity, similar to um, like the bounce back loans and then uh, furlough money. It means that they can collect and recoup more later on because they can say, ah, yeah, but we gave you money towards your energy bills. So we need to collect that back now. And even though you didn't necessarily ask for it, you're going to still reap the uh, reap the um, detriment of having it. So it, it's coming anyway. Yeah, well, the problem is that the prices aren't coming down, are they? So it doesn't matter. No, they're not. The I thought it was transitory. If they, they've, given me, <laughs> they've, they've given me money this month and I think two months ago, but I know they're not giving me mo- any money in three months or six months. No. But I, I know the all... three months are done now, so that's now going to start hitting me. And they're just doing it so they can then go, oh, no, no, but this month, this year, when you look at it year on year, didn't go up by that much because we helped you out. And they're doing it to massage numbers and statistics. And then it will slowly be removed. But it's also what's in the CPI basket there's a lot of government subsidies into various goods. So it's like whether that the CPI is not only hidden by selecting the the goods which can be scaled more easily, but it's whether it's also the subsidized goods. So they actually subsidize things like wheat and um our favorite product, soy, and other other products which are cheaper to produce to put the price artificially down. So it won't be hit by the inflation. So yeah, you're right. It, it could be something crazy like 50 to 100%. But it's very hard to actually figure out because you'd have to actually go to the raw costs, get one hmm. farmer. Because I know from speaking to a farmer, um, a dad of one of the kids at the kids' school, um, fertilizer had gone up like three hundred percent or something like that, and that is the raw costs of what's going in. Yeah, yeah. I live out here with a lot of farmers, and they're just saying, "Oh, I think they get hit first, don't they?" Because they're the they're the people that kind of produce the goods and then we don't see it for another year because they have to pass on their cost eventually. Yeah, because he's yeah. telling about, you know, the crops for next year and what they've had to do. And he's like, we have to do this and this and this. And he went yeah. for it. And I was just like, I was mouth open how much it had gone up. Yeah, I'm hearing the same. Even their red diesel, their, their red diesel that they used to use that, that is, is used in all tractors and like farm machinery. It used to be like a third of the price of diesel. Now it's virtually one to one. And they wow. go, it's... And they use like thousands of pounds worth of diesel a week because tractors are fucking heavy. Yeah, of course. And they, and they run them for, you know, 10, 12 hours a day. Uh, and they're doing heavy, heavy work. And it's their biggest bill by far. And they've gone, that's just, that's just trebled overnight. So we have to pass the costs down. Yeah. Move, I suppose moving on from inflation. So we could talk about this all night in its own pod. Um, we got a next one, which was a great sound clip from um, the president of Italy. So um, she's um, an extreme right winger. Um, I think what really set this off was when she got elected, um, Macron came up with something about how it wasn't fair for democracy or something. And she slapped him down quite badly straight away and quite well. But I can't remember what, what the rebuke was. And then it's come about again because she's taken a massive dislike into Macron. It was a lovely video which I'd recommend everyone to watch. Him. It is brutal what she says. So what I didn't understand is there's, what's it called? There's, it's a type of franc. So France still print francs, which I didn't realise, but for African former colonies. Yeah. So I think it's done because there's a history in poorer countries of, um, going to hyperinflation because no one believes in the currency anymore and because France control it, it's seen as being a bit safer. But ultimately, France print it and they get feedback for printing it and controlling it. And um, she talked about the fact that they're taking money out of, um, I think, the mines for precious metals um, direct from, was it Burkina Faso? Yeah. Um so they're basically siphoning money and she's saying you're making the Africans poor and this is why they want to come to Europe whereas if you left them be they can actually build up their economy and it's fair because you think about how an economy or country moves from being third world or poor through to being a, a developing through to being a first world so like 
probably China, probably actually, I suppose China is the best example. It's because yeah. they've been allowed, they've not been held back. They've been allowed to develop step by step. And even with kind of like authoritarian controls, they've still done it step by step and we've had really good growth. And this is, well, looking at these former France colonies, they are being held back and they're being profiteered off by France. So you kind of, but it does also raise this question in the back of my head. France, France are taking a slice of your exports. They're obviously taking a slice of your money. Where's all this money going in France? Because they can't afford shit. Yeah. You know, it's not going into the people of, um, to serve the people in France. It's being siphoned out, isn't it? Oh, yeah. She, they're, they're probably converting loads of these francs into dollars. Mm. You know, what she goes through, it's just horrendous. She basically, she, she lists um, a little boy who's in the mines. And when he comes up, the, the stuff that he mines, France, just during, according to regulation, 50% of everything he mines, they just get. France just owns it. And the other 50%, they print fake money out of thin air and buy it off it. So France, essentially, these 14 African nations, half of everything they get is theirs anyway. Just, there's it's no even, much, it's there's no scam like, there. It's, it's just pretty much like theft. modern day slavery, though, isn't it? No, it, it's, it's exactly that. Yeah. It, so well, to actually, say I that Africa was free of slavery is a lie. France are enslaving yeah. 14 nations uh, right here. A better description, it's serfdom, isn't it? Mm. It is um, modern day serfdom, but having it in a different country is your dirty little secret. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just I think slavery is is a harsh word, and I think it's deserved here. It just is. It's just the, the, the people just don't know they're slaves. They think they're free. But when someone comes and takes 50% of your pay packet and they're an indifferent nation, and then buy the other 50% with fake money they print out of thin air and don't even recognize themselves. It is it's just one hundred percent theft and fair play to the president of Italy coming out and just exposing this complete scam, which I had no clue France were this corrupt. I knew that you know it's like the whole British Empire, and I knew that France had their own little empire, and I knew they still held on to it, which is why France has spoken in so many places around the world. But I had no clue they were still printing francs over there and stealing 50% of all resources as it was coming out of the ground. This needs to be heard, and fair play to her for raising awareness of this, because... But it's kind of like, I suppose the flip side, she's a nationalist, she wants Italy to do better, she's seeing some problems happening in Italy, so she wants to sort them, and she's actually gone, there's a problem because we're getting overpopulated or whatever, I don't know what it is. But then she's actually gone, when you look at it, the source of that is because they're basically getting ruined by france aren't they so she's going back because there's a load of twitter comments around this where they're saying i don't trust this person she's a fascist and blah blah oh, blah but they're it, the woke bots but it's literally you lit you know if it is a real person they've literally read what someone said in a newspaper and they're not watching that video where you're going just, i'm just, kind of going i may not believe well, I, I, don't I, don't, I, don't, I don't know politics i mean know basically politics, she's but... calling out what they're doing as wrong but not necessarily saying that italy should be doing exactly that but at the same time italy should be doing something yeah but, but it's a fact that... okay. I, I do get it like oh she's got something to gain like because she's competing with france but just put that to one side is is what she's saying right and if it is then it's clearly wrong right it's just <laughs> this is this is clearly wrong. So, so maybe she's like, oh, we're, we're arguing. We've got a real tough trade deal with France. We're trying to work out at the moment. I need some leverage. So undermining them on this will, will help me. Correct. Maybe that is. Maybe that is one of, one of her incentives to throw France under the bus. It's because she wants some leverage on some trade deals. But there's an interesting no, no comment. Thing is, is she right? Because if this is right, then it's disgusting. And it's slavery. A comment here says the African leaders who have tried to go against these powerful NATO countries ended up dead. We are lucky to have someone on the other side speaking up for African justice. Yeah, but that's like you know, that's she's obviously got she's got something to win in it. But it's like, my God, like that kind of stuff which she said, and there's been silence across the media. So what she hasn't said hasn't been reported. But also, there's been no comeback from Macron or France about it. Uh, so. Weird, I saw a great um, little video today of Macron getting slapped across the face. Oh, I saw that. I like <laughs> so, yeah. Some guy was <laughs> to take his hand and just went, 
he grabbed his hand with one, pulled him in, and then slapped him across the face. He got he got fucked up afterwards. The freaking the secret. I thought it's a called. woman. I couldn't tell who it yeah, was. Kyle long hair. Yeah, he got fucked up. I like, I fair play. Like Macron got a good slap across the face. He deserves it. <laughs> the humiliation was worth the beating. I'm sure. Um, should we just go straight into uh, login with lightning? I know we've got the other one beforehand, but I wasn't too sure how uh, that links back to Bitcoin. It doesn't. It's just me um, ranting. To <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll, I don't, we'll I, ignore I it. So. Yeah, we'll ignore <laughs> yeah. it. So, if you don't uh, want to get cancelled, we can skip it. So. Yeah, let, let's. Uh, we, I do want to come back next week. And this is a, uh, a good feel good story as well, especially after following story or the previous story so soon you'll be logging in with lightning and uh, lightning buttons appearing everywhere and i guess it's along the topic of what we were talking about previously last week about you know what if there were no more exchanges and exchanges became extinct uh, and there is a another alternative way and this alternative way is happening and it not even just happening, it's actually here, right? Yeah, yeah, it looks good. Logging so, the so it's basically like a federated identity, but using the Lightning Network. And from what I understand, like a federated identity is fairly static. It's just using your Facebook login, whereas this would be using kind of like um, a kind of like share key, but it's a moving target, so it's pretty much Wallet. impossible to crack. Hmm. Just, yeah, you just you just use a wallet, yeah. You use wallet ID and um you have the keys for your lightning wallet. And if you then indicate that you are willing to do a transaction from that wallet, it means it's you. So you can have access to your balance, you can log in. It's cool, it's, it's nice. Because obviously yeah. the, this this is the, the best type of federated ID, right? Because there's no KYC, there's no name and address, there's no real world identities behind it. You just know the same person's coming back. You can be very sure the same person's coming back because they're using their keys. Don't know anything about them. Just a lightning address. Mm. Mm. Okay, that's good. Interesting take on it. Yeah, definitely. I saw the story late, but definitely need to uh, to read and look into that more. Um, you know, we, we're going to see more and more transactions happening on the Lightning Network. And if you can do things like this, perhaps... You know, it solves an issue which people have of resetting their passwords, right? So to finish on, we've got another positive story. The best thing... There is some positivity in this pod somewhere. Yeah. You know, if you've come to the end, then well done. But we do try to give a little bit of positivity. I'm in a bear market, man. It's tough. But Bitcoin yeah. hasn't changed. Bitcoin is still Bitcoin. The, the network's still strong every 10 minutes. Yeah, one Bitcoin's out. always one Bitcoin. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, so um, we're still buying. Gigachad's still buying. I'm but, still stacking. It's all good. It's all good. I'm sure from episode number one, we've been in a bear market, though. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think we just went live about a month before the top. <laughs> and then we <laughs> It was down only from there. Uh, yeah, so if anyone does listen, you know, we are we are totally negative because that's all we've ever known. Whilst we've been on air, it's only been a bear market. Actually, no, we did our we did our predictions. Oh. We did our predictions yeah. at the end of 2021. I think mine was like 700 k <laughs> Yeah, yeah, 750 we're, you were. I think we're about to end the year and we're at 16 <laughs> a little bit <laughs> Uh, 99 98% off <laughs> that's why I'm not a trader that's why DCA I don't fucking trade yeah I think I went for 210 or something ridiculous like that but I think it it has exposed it'll be interesting when we have the next comeback because we talked about it this one's been built on heavy leverage and it hasn't really been exposed until this part of the journey so we've had FTX, we've had, what's that one which we talked about? A, whatever it was, A2C or something like that. We've got, um, and, and then and, we've got potentials DGC, on, yeah. we've got potentials on Coinbase, we've got Gemini problems, Genesis, potential grayscale. So yeah. this is exposing all the leverage of them again. So 
when we see Bitcoin move again forward, it's whether it'll be a more organic growth or whether it will be heavy, heavily leveraged with the fiat system again. But we'll wait and see. But anyway, final story. I think it's one of those things where people are just so used to it. They, it will be difficult for them not to try to leverage it in some way. Yeah, fair point. But anyway, finally, <laughs> <laughs> um, the best thing that came out of FTX. Oh, one more Two hundred and twenty Bitcoin withdrawn from exchanges. So I know my stats are in there. Maybe not the whole stack though. Two hundred twenty thousand. Missed a thousand. Oh, whoops. So two hundred and twenty thousand Bitcoin withdrawn from exchanges. So yeah, anyway. I myself um withdrew. Um and that was I bought some Bitcoin I think yesterday and I saw the news about Coinbase this morning, went shit, time to get it off. Just in case it's better to be safe than sorry. And I think even Miss No Show was doing the same. Yeah, well, you know, we've all got kids, so we're, we're we don't really know how to pull out, but now we do, and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wish I had have pulled out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was thinking about this, and it said the best thing that came out of FTX. What about the sex tape, or is that just not count because we haven't seen it yet? Dude, it was meant to come out on Friday, and it was just it's just a meme. Otherwise, yeah. that would have been the best thing, but yeah, it doesn't come out, is it? It's it's fake. There's there's no Caroline Sam on the beanbags, and I'm gutted. <laughs> <laughs> we would have had to do a review, and it'd be part four. Uh, hey, so I, I, I never know in this. I, I'd have done a one on one. I just I'd have just done it on my own. Break it down, scene by scene, frame by frame. <laughs> that whole show. I've been all over it. <laughs> There's the soy going into the lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It's just yeah. one phrase which has come back from a friend which just ends in my head, and it involves a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was funny on Friday, all the memes that came out. Everyone was fucking trolling that they found the sex tape, and you clip the link. There's two monkeys fucking going at it. Or something. <laughs> like, God damn it. Like, so, someone post a wheel one. <laughs> It's, it's, it's the, are we saying that the picture of her with the black squares then a fake as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's just wearing a, a, a fancy dress, and it's it's one of those weird things. You can do it on girls a lot because they wear quite revealing clothes. Just put black squares over their clothes, and it looks like they're naked. They're not. Mm. You just your brain goes, they must be naked, but they're not. They're not covering up anything. Yeah. Everything just clothes. So the picture of Caroline with the black squares. It's just she's just got. I think I literally think like she's wearing a Harry top. Potter. She's wearing a yeah, Harry Potter yeah. outfit, but they put like squares <laughs> over it, and it looks like she's naked. And they're like, "It's a still from the sex tape." It's like, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> it's funny. That, right. that, that's the thing. We knew we were getting trolled a lot, right? And that's just one of the trolls. Which, out of all the trolls, that's the one I'm most gutted about. I wish that was real. But... If you've got this far, please, please, please take that advice though. Pull out. Take off any bitcoin that you have on an exchange and just self self custody dudes and don't subscribe to the podcast don't tell anyone about <laughs> it just fucking keep it to yourself because yeah. otherwise, the more people you tell the more likely are we are to get cancelled if so never look saved us today because i was about to go into a story that was about to expose the pandemic the vaccination <laughs> ukraine <laughs> And um, that would on, that on its own would have been the end with a co-host called Andrew Tate. Yeah, I think I think even without that, we've still gone too far, probably numerous times. But way too far. And we've um, we Don't might have part four. We might have part four of the FTX saga next week. You never know; it might continue, or we might just have more Bitcoin centered news. Yeah, might get back to business. Hey, but um, yeah, FTX has definitely rocked our world, but hopefully we've rocked your world. You see what I've done there, seamless link, because this pod number 75 has been brought to you by Mr. All In, a.k.a. the Trillion Dollar Man, Dr. Evil 10%, a.k.a. the People's Champ, myself, Sir Neverlook, a.k.a. the Excellence of Execution, and she was here, but she's never here. Mrs. No Show. She hasn't really got a ripping today, so we'll just say that She's been 
drinking Starbucks. As always. Peace out.